you know what? It's the first weekend of the new year. And uh, 2014 is upon us. And um, I thought I'd like to do a bit of a study tonight on uh, one thing that would actually help us as we set some of those New Year's resolutions and as we move into a new year. And uh, that is the topic of wisdom and knowledge. You see, as we start out our new year full of promise and full of excitement, you know, I felt it just might be a good place to start. You see, I believe that wisdom is a subject close to God's heart. You know, how do I know that? Because the scripture speaks a lot about wisdom. In fact, there are three books in the Bible that uh, we call the wisdom books. They are Proverbs, Psalms, and Ecclesiastes. And the Bible speaks incredibly, in huge amounts about the topic of wisdom. And I've just found that in God's word, if he's saying something a lot, it's close to his heart. And it has been, because I, as I look at this and as I started to study, I realized that it's been the tendency of the Christian faith and Christians around the, around the world, and especially in the last 10 or 20 years, there's been a real tendency for people to fall into the trap of substituting knowledge for wisdom. Because there's a huge difference between the two. There's a huge difference. You see... When you apply yourself, it can be exceptionally easy to acquire knowledge. I did say when you apply yourself, young people. No pressure, you're on holidays. I'll leave you alone. But when we apply ourselves, we can actually acquire knowledge. We can actually learn. But yet how painstakingly slow it is, the process of gaining wisdom. And I believe it's because man gives knowledge, but God gives wisdom. God gives wisdom. You see, knowledge is gleaned from getting an education, either by listening or reading what is learned. And we can acquire knowledge. We can sign up to a course and acquire knowledge. We can go to university and acquire knowledge. But gaining wisdom is much different. We can gain knowledge as we analyze uh, all of our experiences, but gaining wisdom is so much different. You see, wisdom that is from above, there is no course you can sign up to attend. There is no special school. There is no earthly reservoir where wisdom can be stored and received like knowledge can. You see, unlike knowledge, which can be measured in objective analysis, exams and tests, and even IQ tests and other things, intelligence. You see, we can measure knowledge, but you can't, measuring wisdom's a bit different. There's a lot of difference between knowledge and wisdom. And sometimes in our modern world, we get a little bit confused with the two. You see, someone can have great knowledge yet lack wisdom. A person can be knowledgeable, but yet not very wise. A person can have great knowledge, yet still be distant from the living God. You see, there's a big difference. Wisdom defies measure. It can't be treated like knowledge. Knowledge can be rewarded with diplomas and degrees. However, wisdom can, can't be viewed in the same way. The truth is, you can't measure wisdom. It's far more subjective than anything you would imagine. It takes far more time. The reality is that wisdom has a great deal to do with our attitude and our relationship with the living God. That's the reality. That's why wisdom is so hard to obtain because it lines up with our attitude towards God and our relationship to Him it has a lot to do with how we gain wisdom. You see, I love what it says in Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. The fear of the Lord 
is still the telltale mark of wisdom. You see, wisdom is one of the greatest attributes that we as Christians should possess. I believe that if we are going to be effective in our own lives, we need to be wise. If we are going to be effective in reaching our community, we need to be... You're catching on. If you're going to be effective in our own relationships, we need to be wise. If we're going to be effective in handling everyday situations, we need to be wise. How many parents are in the house and understand that last concept? How we handle everyday situations and things that come up over and over again, we need to be wise. We need to have and possess wisdom. But if we're going to be effective in our witness for Jesus, we also need to be wise. I love what the Apostle Paul says to the church at Colossae as he was encouraging and exhorting them. He said in chapter 4, devote yourselves to prayer. This is the New Living Translation. Devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Pray for us too that God will give us many opportunities to speak about his mysterious plan concerning Christ. That is why I'm here in chains. Pray that I will proclaim this message as clearly as I should. Live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive. That word attractive there actually means seasoned with salt. Make it attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. He exhorts them there to be wise. The whole subject of wisdom is one that is quite obviously important to the Lord. It's very clear that we need to be constantly working at being wise or gaining wisdom. I love what the scripture says about wisdom. I just looked at a few. There was, you know, so many scriptures we could use, but here's just a few. If you think you are already wise, then you need to become wiser. Because Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 13 says, Blessed is the man who finds wisdom. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7, Wisdom is supreme, therefore get wisdom. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 8, a man is praised according to his wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 8, he who gets wisdom loves his own soul. So we must become wise in everything we do because I believe that people are attracted to wisdom. Having wisdom causes you to have influence. Why? I don't know about you, but people listen to wise people. Here's a good one. I was shocked when I read this. If you're a bit long in the face and you need a face lift, the scripture's got the answer for you. You don't need surgery. Because Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 1 states that wisdom brightens a man's face. If you're concerned about your appearance and you really want to brighten your face, the Bible has the answer. Become wise. Never settle for the trap of just gaining knowledge and think that your knowledge and through gaining knowledge, you're actually becoming wise because that's not the case at all. You see, true wisdom, the Bible states, comes from the Lord. In Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 6, for the Lord gives wisdom. True wisdom only comes from God. James 1.5, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to him. So how can we guard ourselves from falling back into this trap of thinking that by reading and gaining knowledge, we're getting becoming wise. Well, there's a few things, and I'm just going to talk about a couple today. You see, the first thing 
I would say is read the book of Proverbs regularly. So let's turn to the book of Proverbs in chapter 1. We'll start right at the start in chapter 1 of the book of Proverbs. So we're turning there. We're opening our Bibles or your iDevice. I just don't think you can beat the rustling of pages. I'm one of these old people. Everyone, you know, they, I, I, I lost my Bible for a while and I discovered that my daughter had it. Somehow she liked mine better than hers. It's well used. Proverbs chapter 1, we're all there. Verse 1, it says, The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. And listen to this, verse 2. For attaining wisdom and discipline, for understanding words of insight, for acquiring a disciplined and prudent life, and doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning. And let the discerning get guidance. For understanding proverbs and parables and the sayings and riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and discipline. Fools despise knowledge and discipline and wisdom. You see, I try to read one chapter of Proverbs every day along with my soap reading. Why? Because there's 31 chapters in Proverbs. There's one for every day. And if there's not quite, if, you, if we've got 31, you don't have 31 days, that's okay. You can read the last couple of chapters in the last day. And for most of us blokes, you know, chapter 31 doesn't really apply to us much. I'm not going there. It's okay, sweetheart. I haven't sinned yet. It's okay. You see, it includes descriptions of over 180 different types of people and covers countless topics. I was actually doing a study on Proverbs. I've actually gone through the book from start to finish and I've analysed every verse and I've applied them to topics and you'll discover there's 86 different topics covered in the book of Proverbs. There is incredible source of wisdom. You need to read and learn to read the book of Proverbs daily. I have included Ecclesiastes into that lot as well. But the fact is you've just got to keep on reading. There is no mumbo jumbo, no Rubik's Cube theology to work out. It's nothing to unscramble, no weird abstract theories to unravel. It's straight talk for all of us who live on this crazy planet called Earth. And it's good stuff. Solomon says in verse 1 that these writings have been recorded to help us know wisdom. And I think we should take him up on it. <laughs> Let's look again at the benefits in verses 1 to 7. It says there, for attaining wisdom and discipline, for understanding words of insight, for acquiring a disciplined and prudent life, for doing what is right, just and fair, for giving prudence, knowledge and discretion, for giving discretion to the young. Letting the wise add to their learning and give discernment and guidance to our lives. See, verse 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The second thing I'd say is found in verses 8 and 9. Let's go on to verse 8 and 9 of Proverbs there. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, then do not forsake your mother's teaching, for they will be a garland to grace your head and a chain to adore your neck. The second thing I'd like to tell you about wisdom is hear and heed the counsel of those you respect. God has put people in your life for a reason. God has put people in your life for a reason. You need to listen and heed the people around you that God has put there that you trust and that you respect. 
You see, listen to my son, to your father's instruction. Do not forsake your mother's teaching. They will be a garland to grace your head and a chain to adore your neck. You see, wisdom just isn't li limited to the sayings of Scripture. It is possible that God has given you godly parents, several trusted mentors and leaders, one or two friends that have, you know, the ability to speak into your, into your life and into your experiences. I'll tell you something else that gives you lots of wisdom, and that is your experiences, your situations, the circumstances that you've walked through. They're all for a reason. I've learned that God doesn't waste our time putting us through things. <laughs> He doesn't waste his time, you know, causing you. And he says, the scripture says that he's not going to put you in a circumstance that he thinks is going to break you. But sometimes we go through these things and we come out the other end far wiser and far more able to assist others going through similar situations. We can stand with people far more readily when we've been through ourselves. A man with an experience, a man with a testimony is far more powerful than a man with a story. Did you hear that? I meet people all the time that, you know, you've seen them go through things in their lives and, and they feel that those experiences have actually cut them out of doing things for God. And I say, you're actually wrong. God doesn't waste his time. God can use you powerfully if you'd only open your heart and mind and allow him to use you. Your experiences are valuable. Even at the time when they were painful and negative, right now they are valuable and they are a tool in your armour, not a stain on your life. Did you hear me? The fact is that we have got so many people with so many experiences in the kingdom of God, in the body of Christ, and yet the devil tries to keep them in a small place instead of us realising that we have the ability to release incredible power from those things. That's the power and the difference between knowledge and wisdom. There's incredible power with wisdom. Heed those. Some of the teenagers in the house... You're all sitting here, most of you. There's an old saying. It says, tired of being harassed by your stupid parents? Move out, get a job, pay your own bills. Do it quickly while you still know everything. <laughs> it's old. I actually saw it in someone's house a few days ago and I thought, gee, that's good. And it sort of lines up. He those whom you count, who you respect, heed their counsel, listen to them. It is possible that they might help you. The third thing I'd say about wisdom and about gaining wisdom is choose your friends carefully. Choose your friends carefully. I love what it says. Verses, we're going to go on a bit further. Verses 10 and 9. Listen, uh, 10 and 11, sorry. 9, 10, and 11. No, 10 and 11. We've already done 9. My son, if sinners entice you, do not give in to them. If they say, come along with us, let's lie and wait for someone's blood. Let's waylay some harmless soul. Let's keep going. Let us swallow them alive like the grave. And whole, like those who go down in the pit. We'll get all sorts of valuable things and fill our houses with plunder. Throw your lot in with us. Let's keep going. And we will share a common purse. My son, do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their paths, for their feet rush into sin and they are swift to shed blood. How useless to spread a net in full view of all the birds. These men lie in wait. For their own blood, they waylay only themselves. Such is the end of all who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the lives of those who get it. Choose your friends wisely. You see, the reality is, if you hang out with fools, 
It's not long until their foolishness will affect you. They will affect you and affect your destiny. The, the longer I live on this earth, the more I know the importance of choosing friends wisely. Let's follow God. Solomon's counsel here. Do not consent to relationships that drag you down and hurt your walk with God. Don't consent to those things. Watch out who you're hanging out with because they will influence your life. There are plenty of people who fall into their own traps or ambush their own lives. These people are more than willing to get you involved in counterproductive activities that will keep you at God's uh, distance from God and will keep wisdom at arm's length from your life. You see, ultimately, choosing our friends has a lot to do with everything. You see, people like that will destroy you and you don't need that. The devil is out to take you out. It started way back. I love what it says in the book. John says it so well. The thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and life to the full. What Jesus was saying there is that this, this, this fight has been put in play for a long time. The enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and life to the full. You see, that's it right there. The reality is... That right from the beginning, the enemy has been taking people out and bringing people down and bringing people down to a small place. But you see, Jesus came to give us life and life to the full. But you see, Jesus is giving us life. The devil's trying to take it away. And he will throw everything at you in order to take that life out of you. He'll bring people across your path. He will actually utilize everything he can to take you out. Because you see, he doesn't have to turn you into an axe murderer. He just needs to make you dysfunctional. He just has to neutralize your influence. He doesn't have to turn you into a thief. He doesn't have to turn you into a rotten sinner. In fact, he's got lots of Christians in the kingdom neutralized and they're still in church praising the Lord and he loves that because they're not doing anything to ruffle him at all but you get fired up for the Lord and you start doing stuff for God and you start shaking the tree guess what's going to happen to you you're on his target list yet again because he gives you life the devil's going to try and take it away. And he'll do it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Because that's just the plan that he's got. The fourth and final thing tonight is pay close attention to life's reproofs or life's lessons. In verse 20 and 23, 20 to 23, it says this. Wisdom calls aloud in the street. At this point, the writer here is, pers is personifying wisdom. In other words, making wisdom sound like a person. And he says, wisdom calls aloud in the street. It's interesting that he, it, he, he refers to her it in the feminine here right now. She. She raises her voice in the public squares. At the head of the noisy street, she cries out. In the gateway of the city, she makes her speech. How long will you simple ones love your simple ways? How long will you mockers delight in mockery and fools hate knowledge? If you had only responded to my rebuke, I would have, this is wisdom, I would have poured out my heart to you and made my thoughts known to you. You see, the reality is, friends, as we go through life, there is bumps and thumps. And so many of us, when we hit a bump, we go, oh, woe is me, instead of actually saying, God, what are you teaching me here? 
Because if you respond to that lesson, to that rebuke right, then let me tell you, wisdom's going to pour her heart out on you. That's a good thought. Well, I actually thought it was a good thought when I came up with it this week. I actually said, gee, that's good. If you would only listen to the things that life throw up to you, listen hard. In other words, when we listen, wisdom, she, is available to you. See, right there, life's rebukes and reproofs and lessons that wisdom pours out her spirit on us and makes her words known to us. You see, as I said earlier, God never wastes our time, allowing us to go through all kinds of things without a purpose. If you love the Lord, in each one of these lessons or each one of these corrections, there's a lot of wisdom attached that we need to look for. Many and foolish are those who simply grit and bear. Few but the wise and those who hear wisdom's voice and listen to her counsel and work through their situations and circumstances. In my, part, in my pastoral experience, I, it's amazing that you can see how, what the devil does to people. I used to come home sometimes, I said to Robin, Robin, you know, we've got to pray. You know, how is it that people can get themselves in such strife? And then I understand. Because God's trying to tell them something. When I first came to the Lord, I was a miracle. I was a miracle salvation. And... Um, I was 19 years of age and I very rarely tell my story much at all but it's simply this that I was at the lowest point I reckon any human being could get and my mum's 87 and she broke her hip on Christmas Eve so I've spent a lot of time in hospital this week but um she used to say to me, well, after I came to the Lord a, a year or so after, she said, you know, we were just talking about a few things. And she said, you know what, when I, before you were saved, I really want to apologise to you. Well, she didn't really want to apologise. No, she didn't. She said, I didn't pray that God would bless you. Not once. I said, God, do whatever it takes to bring him to his knees. I said, you're kidding me. She said, no, nope, prayed it for years. <laughs> Young people, if you have a praying mother, quit while you're in front. <laughs> I say it a lot. Praying mothers generally get what they want and praying grandmas, man, you're in real strife. <laughs> praying grandmas have a direct line to heaven. They have a red phone beside their bed. It's the God line. Praying mothers and praying grandmas, if you're here, don't pray blessing. Pray that God would do whatever it takes to break through. Because there's wisdom to be learnt there. There is. But all I know that few listen. And I remember the day I went to church. I was in a serious, serious, serious accident. And uh, I was very intoxicated at the time. And I remember getting up in that morning and went into my, I went into my mother's room and I said, there's got to be more to life than this. And she looked right at me and said, yeah, there is. You need to come to church. And I said, I think I do. And you know what? I went to church that day at Springvale Christian Community Church. And the pastor 
could have been preaching on Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck and the Three Stooges. And I still would have got saved. Because I went there on purpose. I had every intention of getting my, right, my life right with God. Why? Because I'd heard. Heard the voice. Wisdom. And as you look through life, and I could tell you lots of funny stories about the providence of God, how God just kept me. When I could have gone pear-shaped like you would not believe. Like I, everyone laughs at this, but there was a time when I, you know, was growing my own drugs. And um, I had these plants out the back of my bungalow. And I went away on holidays. And I lived in South Springvale. And uh, I remember coming home from holidays. Because I used to tell my mum they were tomato plants and she didn't. She didn't think anything of it. And so she took my tomato plants because she felt they they didn't get enough sun behind my bungalow. And I came home from holidays to find my tomato plants in the front yard. This is not a joke. This is dead, dead serious. Where she quite often used to water her garden for an hour or so every night, talking to the neighbours, telling them, oh, yes, this is Jimmy's tomato plants. I'm just watering them. There was a senior sergeant that lived four doors up across the road who I'm sure must have seen my tomato plants. And uh, I came home and absolutely, how long have they been here? Mum, thank you. (laughs) Oh, about four days, five days, maybe. Oh, God. Quickly got rid of them. But first, because they'd been four days in the sun and nicely watered, they had heads on them like... Anyway, but if you'd imagined, everything could have gone pear shaped right then, but it didn't. There was because God had a bigger plan for me, and there's so many, so many. As I look back, and as I started to look back as a young man, and as I came to God, and as I understand godly principles, and I was a 180 degree turnaround in my life. Do you know what? No Christian person had to follow me up. I followed them up. I was radically saved. Because that, when you listen to that and you hear it, so you've got to listen to life's lessons. They'll teach you incredible wisdom. They'll teach you incredible. So what have I learned about wisdom? Well... I've learned that the Lord desires his people to be wise. I've learned that the Lord gives freely to those who ask, gives wisdom freely. I've learned that you've got to read wisdom literature and scripture regularly. Proverbs, Psalms, Ecclesiastes. You've got to listen to those that God has put around you. I've learned that You need to be very careful who you choose to hang out with. I've learned that you've got to listen to life's lessons carefully. And I've also learned that if you don't know the Lord or if you're not right with him, the wisest thing that you can do is find him. So I'd like, Ryan, if you can come play for me. You see, we can do lots of things in life. But we've got to listen to what God is saying to us. And we need to start out 2014 
with an intention in our hearts to be wise. I felt that if you approach this whole topic of wisdom from a holistic approach, that we need to become wise. And if we think we're pretty wise now, then you know what? You're kidding yourself because there's always room to be wiser. Someone who's very close to me and close to my heart said, you know, Jim, you'll be a very wise man one day. I said, really? I thought I was just made a mistake. He said, yeah, that's true. That's why you're going to be wise because you're like, you make lots of mistakes. And you know what? It's been true. It's amazing that in the last 10 or 15 years of my life, I, the amount of people from all places that you just get phone calls out of the blue, say, Jim, I've just got this. What do you think? What do you think? Yet 30 years ago when I first saved, first got saved, you would have said, ring him? You're kidding me. But I know that if you listen to the Lord, if you grow up soft and sensitive to him, you're always ready. I had someone just tonight ask me, do you, do you find it? Are you on holidays now? Are you? They said, yeah, I'm on holidays. So do you have to? No, I'm ready. I'm always ready. Because I'm at a season in my life when I'm just ready. I'm saying, devil, what have you got? I'm ready. Because one thing I know, I'm, I don't live in fear of what the devil's doing. Because the devil is dead set scared of me. And that's not just rhetoric. Anyone that knows me knows I actually, live my, I actually live my life that way. I've set myself up to rain havoc on the enemy this year. Rain havoc. I'm going to bring so many people on journeys this year. They're going to be at such, they're going to be, oh man, I'm ready. And in my job, man, I'm reminded of the devil's work every day. Don't ever forget our persecuted brothers and sisters. Because in Baghdad on the 25th of December, special day in the Christian calendar, there were believers in church in Baghdad. And the southern suburb of Baghdad, a place called Dora, there's St. John's Catholic Church. And as they were leaving services, the Islamists exploded two car bombs. 30 people were killed. And we haven't even got an accurate count of those injured. They just went to a Christmas service. What were we doing? We're free. We can come to church anytime we like. We're not, no one's going to blow us up in the car park. Yesterday in Cairo, 13 people lost their lives. It's old news now. We don't even report it. Listen to the Lord, friends. Why don't we bow ahead? Father, we pray, I pray, there are people here that need wisdom. We need wisdom. There are people here that are away from you. And they're doing everything they can not to hear your voice. And I know there are people here, as I was praying this week, I just sense, let's start 2014 with our hearts right with God. There might be people here that don't even know the Lord. Well, I want to encourage you to know Him. I want, you to, I want to encourage you.
to know Him. If you're away, if your heart is away from God, don't go any further tonight. I'm not going to embarrass anyone tonight, but I do want you to respond. If you don't know the Lord and you might be here with someone, with a friend, listen to the voice of the, of the Lord tugging at your heart right now, saying, yeah, tonight I want to bring you home. If that's you, just put up your hand quickly right across this building. Is there anyone say, yeah, that's me tonight. I need to know him. I need to know him. What about your heart, friend? Is your heart, you may know God, but is your heart away from the Lord? Are you listening to the still soft voice? Can you hear it? Or do you need to come back and say, God, in a fresh way, I just want to give my life to you again because I'm away from you right now. If that's you, nobody's looking. Every eye's closed right now. If that's you, quickly just raise your hand. I'm going to see it. I'm going to pray for you. Where you're at, where you're seated, I'm going to pray for you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Say, yeah, that's me. My heart's away from God. I really need to get my life right with God tonight. I need to come back. I want to hear that still soft voice. You know that's you. Just quickly. Just quickly. Don't ignore the voice. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? I'm going to hold this out because I know there are people. They're even sit you're sitting there uncomfortable because you know that's you. Don't grow hard. Just... Submit to the leading of God. Thank you. Who else? Who else? Yeah. Right across this building. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. There's a couple more. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, people are starting to respond to the Lord right now. This is family, folks. We just need to come to God. We're not embarrassing anyone. Just going to pray. Is there anyone else? Father, I thank you for those that have responded. The five or so people that responded tonight, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to their hearts. Lord, as they submit their lives to you in a fresh way right now, even now. Lord, I pray that you would be so real to them. Father, I thank you that you would just do a work in their hearts. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just speak to them. Speak to them now in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray for all of us as a church family that in everything we would become much wiser in 2014. Lord, that you would help us to become wise in everything we do in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. We hope you enjoyed watching this video and plan on returning to the Bayside website soon. If you're in the Melbourne area, why not visit us at either our Cheltenham or Frankston location and discover how church has changed. Check it out.